In this week's Mountain State Science Report, cutting edge video games as the newest education tool. Carrie Brown reports that research at Wheeling Jesuit University's Center for Educational Technologies has led to video games that let students build, explore, and conduct their own science experiments. Every single day, you can look somewhere in the sky, day or night, and find the moon. And it's always different. It looks different because of its position in the sky compared to the sun. So we thought we could use the fascination of space travel and, and the moon to get kids in, in engaged in learning and understanding science. The Center for Educational Technologies at Wheeling Jesuit University wants to encourage students to pursue careers in science. The research team believes the way to do that is to make science fun. So they've developed a lunar video game called Moon World. One of the things we've created is a simulation that you see here uh, about the moon, about going to the moon and working as astronauts on the surface of the moon to try to explore it. And the, here you see we're suiting up, getting ready to, to go out onto the surface. The idea of this is not to have students learn so much about the moon, but to learn how to observe, to learn how to make uh, deductions from their observations, to learn to work in teams. We have four astronauts here so that they have to work together. So this is a, a new approach to education. It, it comes across as looking like a game, and it is, but it's an educational game that has strong educational goals and methodology to help the students achieve them. Chuck Wood is a lunar scientist. He helped prepare Apollo and later missions to the moon, so making the game realistic was a priority for him. We modeled the features that it's a playing field on an actual crater on the moon. We've scaled the size of the crater on, on the simulation to what it really is. We've added uh, different types of features on the surface of the moon, geologic features that are actually there. The, the goal of this is to make it so realistic and the astronauts' uh, outfits and the rovers so realistic that the kids completely get engaged in it. And then one of the benefits of this is because it's realistic, you can go outside with binoculars or telescope in the evening and actually see that same crater on the moon that you were driving a rover around in the simulation. Wow. Gee. I can't believe it. Isn't it something that the moon looks like that? To me, I was so surprised. When I look at it up in the sky, it's different than when I look in a telescope. Is it that way for you? So how is it different? It's smaller when you look at it up there. Oh, without the telescope? Yeah. And what's different that you see with the telescope? It's bigger. Moon World has been available online to those 18 and older for about a year but a recently released version is targeted to young children. In Moon World, players can work independently or in groups to explore and conduct their own research as astronauts. If you're going to be on the moon, we want the students to understand that they have to have, take everything there they need. There's no water, there's no air, there's no food. So we include in this a life support system that's part of the simulation, and they end up planting crops so they can harvest food to eat. The the crops create oxygen to breathe. Uh, there's also a respiration that causes water uh, to be produced. So we, we have activities that relate both to geology and to biology, but all of it's realistic. It all is part of the picture of what you need to do to live on the moon. The center has also developed a lunar video game called Selene, named after the Greek goddess of the moon. It's designed for people ages nine and up and is a single player game. Senior researcher Debbie Denise Reese used an approach she created to help develop Selene. The Psy Games approach is a method of designing a game which uses familiar experiences, analogies, and metaphors to help players understand challenging science concepts. Selene starts off with a cinematic view of how the solar system formed, and that's the concept of accretion, and then how the early Earth formed and then how the giant impact happened that created the particles that created the proto-moon. Then the next part of Selene is about how particles stick together, the accretion component. There are three scales of accretion and they get progressively more difficult. 
as the player has to manipulate more and more variables. Then the moon differentiates into layers. And then we show a cinematic to show how the moon differentiated. Then we have a molten moon and we show the surface of the moon. And then the players get to blast it with projectiles. We have a top-down view and a, a cross-sectional view. And then they get to flood it with lava flows. Reese recently tested the game with some Ohio County students. Um, I'm learning a lot about the space and about the moon and the density and the heat and the radiation of the moon. And it is fun to play and you do learn a lot about it. So it's pretty good. And you said you liked, you talked about what you're doing in the game a little bit? Yeah, um, you get to uh, fling asteroids to make your own moon. And that's pretty fun. I think when they were walking on the moon and they saw, you know, astronauts and what astronauts do, I don't think they relate to that. And so I think, I think that is something that will open up some doors for them. They're very young and they're still looking at lots of things, but they will probably remember this experience because it is so visual and it's so exciting. The game, it was, it was fun, but it was kind of hard because you have to like build your own moon and sometimes you'll put together the wrong parts and like there won't, there's not enough time to like put all, put the moon together and sometimes it's hard to find the pieces to make the moon. So you learn a lot. Yeah. And it was really challenging. Both video games are available for playing through the CET website. Minors first need their guardians to complete a consent form. As students play Celine in Moon World, the decisions that they make during their gameplay are recorded and stored in a database. That information is being analyzed by researchers here at the CET to study how students learn in virtual worlds and game-based instructional environments. We can take the gameplay data from many, many students and say, this is where they learned, this is where they had trouble, or individual profiles. And in the bigger, bigger picture, when we have hundreds, thousands of instructional games that are wonderful, we can have profiles of our learners, what they know, what they don't know, what they're prepared to learn. The goal of the Center for Educational Technologies is to get the educational video games into schools across the country. If they can increase student interest, keep their attention, it might cause many of the students who are graduating from high school today in this area to think about a future in the area of science. Moon World is funded by a grant from NASA. Celine was created with funds from the Space Agency and is now being supported by the National Science Foundation. Wood says the video technology under development here has applications beyond science education. I can imagine a time in the future where you take a history class you get involved in an immersive game where you're playing George Washington. What would be your approach to uh, trying to have the, the colonies win the war with the British? Or if you do a biology game, you're the cell, and you're a white blood cell going through the human body. And so what, what are the other features of the, of the body that you see, and how do you interact with, with the, the germs to protect the body? So I think games in learning will become much more pervasive and we're at the stage of trying to see what works. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Carrie Brown in Wheeling. Support for the Mountain State Science Series comes from the National Science Foundation's experimental program to stimulate competitive research, investing in West Virginia's future by building infrastructure for scientific research. On the web at wvresearch.org.